And Wake looking for a win as they are 0-3 in the ACC thus far this season. And the kickoff will sail through the end zone and Pitt will begin their first drive at their own 25-yard line. Christian Vare, they begin their drive in the pistol formation. See Bo Flemister back there. Vare, a quick toss to the boundary and it is caught by Mumfield at the 31-yard line. Kalen Carson takes him down after the six-yard game. Yeah, nice little out route by Mumfield right there. Easy throw and, and pass for Christian Vea right there. They are under center now. Bub means in motion. They hand it off up the middle to Flemister. Not much there, a gain of one on the play. And that's what this Wake Forest defense is going to have to do. They're going to have to figure out a way to take something away from this Pitt Panthers offense today. And hopefully it's the run game because if they're able to force the throws, they'll have a lot of success. Third and three here for the Panthers. They are checking with the sideline, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Quick toss to the sideline to Bartholomew, the tight end, and he should have enough for the first down. A gain of four on the play. Look for Pitt to continue to capitalize on the RPOs, right? Where they put it on their young quarterback, tell him to go out there and get a better feel for the game. But Bartholomew is going to be a big X factor for this team today with his ability at the tight end position. They are again changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Wake with four down linemen. Outside linebacker creeping up to the line of scrimmage. Now backing off. Vayer, with time, finds Johnson. Johnson slips a tackle and runs out of bounds near midfield. He'll be down at the 47-yard line. That's where they'll mark him out after an 11-yard gain and another first down. Yeah, the young Kenny Johnson right there shows you his great route running. His coaching staff has been excited about him. He's a young player, but he runs really, really good routes. Pitt moving the ball well thus far. And off to Flemister up the middle. Twists and turns to midfield, a three-yard gain. Dylan Hazen takes him down. Yeah. Sebo Flemster. Flemster, just an unbelievable talent. You know, he shows his physicality running through in between the tackles right there. Bayer. On second and seven. Again changing the play. Orlando, they've changed the play multiple times here thus far on this first drive. Young quarterback, you want him to settle in, but also you want to know how much that your quarterback knows as well, right? He keeps it and runs out of bounds at the 45. He'll be just shy of the first down. They'll mark him out actually at the 44. So third and one coming up. The way Wake Forest plays their defense, sometimes they like to press their corners or sometimes they like to keep them deep. So I like what Pitt's doing right now. A lot of check with me at the line of scrimmage. Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator, sending in the signal. Seventh play of the drive on third and one. Pistol formation. Bayer again checking with the sideline. High snap. Bayer tosses out to the right side and caught for a first down. Kenny Johnson at the 40-yard line. Deshaun Jones with the tackle. When you look at Wake Forest's defense, they love to give you a too-high shell, but their quarterbacks tend to play about five to seven yards off, so nice, quick, easy throws to the perimeter right there. So far, so good for Pitt. They are now under center. Play action. Running back was on the wrong side. He rolls to his right, tosses to the sideline. Incomplete. Too wide for his intended target, Mumfield. Good job right there by Wake Forest. Understanding, kind of going into the boundary, that you could use that sidelines almost as an extra defender right there and not give a lot of space. Um, Coach Signetti has done a great job right now of calling plays, of mixing it up, of run pass for the young quarterback, Christian, there. Second down and 10 from the 40-yard line of Wake Forest, the first in completion for Vayer thus far today. 
Bayer under center. Mumfield in motion. Play action. Got plenty of time. Tosses it wide to the sideline to Mumfield. A short gain there of two yards. I like the decision making right there of Christian Vera going to Mumfield with the check down because we know that he could throw the deep ball, but that's the next step for a young quarterback. You know, can he take what the defense gives you? Right there, Wake Forest closed the door on the deep ball. Christian Vera, nice little outlet right there, checking the football down. Now it's third and eight, third and long. Curious to see how this works itself out for the young quarterback, Bayer. Tenth play of the drive. Still not in field goal range. Need a couple more for that. Mumfield in motion. Vayer in the gun. Pressure coming. Whistles all over the place and laundry on the field as well. False start, it looks like, on Pitt. Yeah, we're going to get a false start, false start on the right tackle right here, Ryan. Here, here's our lead official, Adam Savoy, who will join us momentarily after he huddles with his crew. False start. Offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. It's third down. Adam Savoy. Pardon me. Yeah, right tackle right there, Ryan Bear. Just a little late getting in his stance. And Christian Bear just moving a little fast right there on that third down. Third and 13. Curious to see what Wake does with their defensive front. Three man pressure. They are over the middle, caught and complete. And a flag on the play as the receiver, Dejon Reynolds, is tackled after a 30-yard gain. That could be a face mask. Nick Anderson took him down. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 45. Penalty is half the distance to goal. Automatic, first down. And Pitt and the young fella showing a propensity for the big play as we saw last week in the rain against Louisville. This time to Dejon Reynolds, and that's an easy flag there. Yeah, great job by Christian just feeling the, the defense right there. Three-man rush, you know, understanding that he has time to push the ball down the field. And a nice easy throw right there in the middle of the football field. Under 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. First and goal from the six for Pitt. They hand it off to Flemister, trying to twist into the end zone. And they're going to mark him down just shy of the goal line. Five-yard gain for Flemister. Flemister shows right there his ability to absorb the contact and keep his feet going. And now Pitt's going fast. There, pushes forward. And they're going to say short, it looks like. Bayer, six of seven in the air for 59 yards on this drive. Full start. Offense. Not all 11 players were set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. Second down. Going a little too fast there, Orlando. Yeah, again with the offensive line right there. You know, that's the thing. When you're going fast, you got to make sure that all the big fellas up front <laughs> are set in that situation, you know, that they get down in that three point stance. I'm sure that hasn't happened to you. You were always set. I tried to. Peyton got me a couple times with, with this <laughs> Omaha and going as fast as possible. <laughs> Second and goal from the six-yard line. Bayer looks like he'll keep it and gets popped. May lose a yard, about a half yard there. Malik Mustafa came in and took him down, a loss of one. Very interesting play call right there by offensive coordinator Frank Sinetti. You know, that was a quarterback run, sprint out all the way. No options in the passing game. So uh, I don't think that that's one that they will come back to later on in the game. Pitt right now three for three on third downs as they huddle up on third and goal. 11 touchdowns for Pitt this season in the red zone. Third and goal from the seven. Vayer got plenty of time all day to throw over the middle. It is caught for a touchdown. A seven yard pitch and catch to Kenny Johnson. And Pitt is on the board right out of the gate. Love the play call right there. 
I think, you know, Pitt did a great job of mixing up their personnel as well. Just right there, just a three-by-one formation and letting their young quarterback get three options to one side of the field. Great job by Christian Bear right there. The extra point here for Pitt is up and good, but a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Let's see what the flag's about. That drive by Pitt, almost six minutes off the clock. Great job mixing up run and pass for Pitt on that off on that drive. Illegal formation, kicking team, more than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, replay the try. Those big fellas up front, Orlando, what's going on with those guys? Those are your guys. Right there, that's inexcusable. You know, when you took a PAT and field goals, normally you're interlocked and you have to be on the line of scrimmage, right? We know that seven guys have to be on the line of scrimmage, so hopefully they get that corrected because you can't afford for that to happen anymore in the game. This is supposed to be an automatic thing right here. You've been doing this for years. Another extra point attempt is up. And good. 13 plays, 75 yards, 6 minutes and 48 seconds off the clock. And but first we'll have the kickoff here by the Pitt Panthers, who look good on that first drive. Yeah, Pitt did a great job of running the football. Nice little play action passes, but also getting their young quarterback, Christian, there comfortable in, the, in that uh, backfield. The kickoff. Claiborne, who took one back last week. Will field it inside his five, and he is taken down near the 20 yard line. We'll pause here for a moment, and we'll see Santino Marucci taking his first real snaps in a moment. On one leg for Wake Forest and Solomon DeShields for Pitt, their linebacker. So, wide receiver and a linebacker went down. And we'll get an update on them in just a moment. Here's Santino Marucci, the redshirt sophomore, taking his first snaps. First career start. Jacksonville, Florida is the hometown. Same hometown as Riley Skinner, as Wake Forest fans hold near and dear to their hearts, certainly. Marucci will hand it off as they bounce it outside. Justice Ellison. And he'll be out of bounds at the 26-yard line, a six-yard gain as MJ Devonshire and Shane Simon take him out. Yeah, a nice, tough, physical run by Ellison right there. And that's what it's going to take today for Wake Forest offensively. The 10 guys around Mar Mariucci are going to have to step their game up a little bit to let the young quarterback feel comfortable. Marucci hands it off again this time, cutting back inside, but a flag on the play. Ellison was near the sticks, but this one looks like it could be coming back. Holding, offense number 55, 10-yard penalty, second down. There's Adam Savoy, our lead official. And that's not what you want to see for the young quarterback. Yeah, it's all gonna, you know, Michael Jurgens right there gets called with the hold. He's gotta keep his hands inside. And you cannot, you know, have the self-inflicted wounds Especially when you have a young quarterback going out there getting his first real live snaps in a big time atmosphere. The 10 guys around him almost have to be perfect in order for him to have success. Ellison in the backfield on second and 14. Big hole as he bowls over a defender as he's taken down at the 25 yard line. That was MJ Devonshire who took the brunt of that hit after the eight yard game. Right tackle Devontae Gordon does a heck of a job right here, just stretching his defender and Ellison just bursting up. You know, nice easy read for him right there on the safety right away, bringing some physicality early. Third and five, much more manageable for Marucci. They hand off to Ellison on the left side and this time swallowed up near the line of scrimmage. And it could be a three and out here for Wake as, yep, Marucci is coming off the field and the punt unit's coming out, a loss of one. Oh, uh, amazing job by Nate Temple, just chasing it down from that left defensive end position, you know, understanding that he saw the tackle's hip go opposite direction where he was bursted out of a rocket ship to make the tackle by chasing it down from the backside right there. MJ Devonshire set to receive inside his 35. Ivan Mora with a line drive kick. 
that bounces right to Devonshire. He picks it up off the bounce. He's headed towards the sideline and out of bounds at the 43-yard line, a 37-yard punt, an eight-yard return. And Pitt will take over again. We'll see what Christian Bayer and company can do. Homecoming. <laughs> Our sideline reporter had a trick, right? Conveyor belt. Oh, and he throws one out to the boundary there, and Mumfield gets popped by Deshaun Jones. Deshaun Jones with a big Time hit. Out for an injury to and an offensive player. Mumfield is down, and they're checking on him. A loss of two on the play. Great job by Deshaun Jones right there, just coming downhill. You know, I talked about when you look at Wake Forest's defense, they have run a lot of two high safety shells, so they allow their cornerbacks to really play off a little bit and see what's happening. Right there is just a quick reaction, him coming downhill and seeing the throw all the way. You know, this is, if you're Pittsburgh, this is where you want Christian Vera to take the next step, understand how that cornerback is playing that he's flat-footed, he's going to react a little bit faster on a throw like that. That was going to be my question as Mumfield is up and walking on his own power towards the sideline, so good news there. Is that a young quarterback kind of leaving his wide receiver out to dry, basically? Yeah, you know, just how Wake plays their cornerbacks, they're going to be, you know, five to eight yards off. And when you throw those quick little passes, those flare routes right there, they're going to be able to react quicker. So you want Christian Vera to take the next step and understand that might not make that throw in that situation moving forward. Second and 12 for Pitt now. They are changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Wake rushing five. They pick it up. Vayer going to tuck it and run, and maybe about a yard on that particular game. Quincy Bryant, the tackler. Great job by Wake Forest on the back end. Just in coverage right there, being very sticky to the wide receivers and the tight ends, and understanding that, hey, we're blitzing right now, and our blitz could force Christian into it, making a quick decision. So a heck of a job in coverage right there by this Wake Forest defense. Third down and 11, Bayer, four of four on third down thus far. Wake showing blitz. And whistles on the field, the flag on the play. Looks like a false start on Pitt again. Got to be able to clean this up if you're Pitt. You know, there's been too many happy feet before the snap. Got to be able to sit in there. It's not that loud out here. Full start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty, third down. Branson Taylor with the infraction. Both tackles right now at this point have had some false start penalties. Branson has to be able to sit in there and listen to the quarterback's cadence and rhythm. This Wake Forest defense has been great. Coach Clawson told us this week it's the best they've played on defense in seven years. Best statistically since 2015. Pressure coming for Vayer over the middle, incomplete. It looks like him and his wide receiver, Kenny Johnson, just not on the same page. Yeah, Kenny Johnson right there on a choice route, you know, where you have to make a decision. Do you go inside or outside? Him and um, Christian Vera just not on the same page right there. He thought he was good. He thought Kenny Johnson was going to break out to the outside on that one. But look for them to come back to that one later on in the game, George. Caleb Junko. Waiting inside his 25 yard line. Taylor Morin receiving, standing by at his 20. Junko punts one and Shank City as it goes out of bounds. And it will be marked at, oh boy, near midfield. They're still going. Oh boy, they are on the pit side of the field and they will mark it at the 47 yard line a 10 yard punt incredible field position for wake forest and the young quarterback the third stringer santino marucci coming up tonight at eight eastern four and two clemson takes on four and two miami at hard rock stadium west durham tim hasselback taylor tannenbaum on the call it's also available on the espn app so you can watch anywhere
starting will linebacker Jacob Roberts just did a heck of a job of rushing the punter to, to force them to shank that one right there. Unbelievable by him. First and 10 from the 47. Claiborne, play action now. Marucci going deep down the field. He's got a man. Oh, and right off the fingertips. Wesley Grimes. He put it right on the money. You can't blame the young fella there. Grimes slapping his hands as he felt like he missed the big opportunity there. Wow, you want this one back. He has a step on the cornerback right there, just right off the fingertips. Man, football is such a game of inches, and, and that's what you see right there. Let's go down to Maryland. Pat, Pat, Pat Narduzzi told his defense that new quarterback won't throw one pass. If they want to run the ball, let's stop them up. Consider Pitt surprised right there. That certainly was the case, and they dodged a bullet there. Claiborne, no gain on the run up the middle. If you're Wake Forest, though, you're going to have more and more opportunities. You know, this pit defense is going to be aggressive. They're going to single you up in coverage. So if you're Mariucci, you just have to know that you're going to get that opportunity at least two to three more times in this game, and hopefully capitalizes on them. Marucci in trouble, throws it over the middle, dangerous pass, and deflected away. Great job there by Height, the tight end. Wow, he played defensive back there. The pressure by A.J. Woods for Pitt. Second straight three and out for Wake Forest. Yeah, those tips and overthrows, got to get those. Pitt almost capitalizes, but like you said, Cameron Height does a great job turning into defensive mode right there, turning into a DB to make sure that that doesn't end up in an interception. M.J. Devonshire set to receive for Pitt. Ivan Mora to punt for Wake. And this one booted into the air. Devonshire will let it bounce. And Wake Forest will down it at the eight yard line. Tough field position for Pitt. A 39 yard punt for the Demon Deacons. Let's go down to Maryland. Of no, Solomon DeShields has not been returned his helmet yet after spending significant time in the injury tent. Pitt's training staff working with him on his balance as his teammates are asking him whether or not he'll be able to return today. He's just got a towel draped over his head, shrugging at them and shaking his head. It's not official that he's ruled out yet, but I would be surprised to see starting linebacker Solomon DeShields return for the Panthers. Solomon DeShields with seven tackles last week, a sack. The redshirt junior from New Jersey. Handoff up the middle. Nice gain there near the sticks. They'll give him a first down, a 10 yard gain for Sebo Flemiston. Nice off tackle run just to the left right there. Continues to show his explosive ability in short spaces right there to go get that first down. Pitt working out of the shadows of their own end zone. Give themselves some breathing room. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. They are under center. Hand off to Flemister. Cuts back inside. Weaving through traffic. And taken down past the 35-yard line to the 37. Nick Anderson with the tackle after a 19-yard gain on the ground for Flemister. Exceptional patience right there. Just reading out the inside zone one gap at a time. Great job taking the cut back on the backside right there by Flemister. 2.30 to go in the first. They are checking with the sideline. Wake. Dropping back into coverage. They find Mumfield on the perimeter. Mumfield picks up the first down and is spun down near the 45-yard line at the 46. A.J. Williams flings him down. Another first down for Pitt. Yeah, great job right there. Wake Forest playing cover four, understanding the cornerback's going to bail out, and Christian just gets it to Mumfield right there. Three plays, three first downs for the Panthers. I like this approach by offensive coordinator Frank Signetti to calm down a young quarterback that hasn't played a lot of snaps. You run check with me so he relaxes at the line of scrimmage because he doesn't know the play until later on in the play clock. Play action. Bayer under pressure. Takes a shot down the field. Too 
far for Bub Means at the 10 yard line. Malik Mustafa in coverage. Right there, you know, Bub Means came wide open, but unfortunately the protection wasn't able to hold up as Christian's getting hit at the time, right at the time where he's trying to let go of that football right there. Second down. And the check with me is going to be a thing all game long. They hand it off to Flemister, runs into his own man. He's going to lose a couple of yards there, a loss of three. Jacob Roberts going to be credited with the tackle. This Wake Forest front six, you know, because they play that 4-2-5 defense, they're very active. They like to move before the snap, but also at the snap and move back. So a lot of different looks that they're going to give this pit offense. And this offensive line is going to have to be perfect in the run game, understanding that there's going to be a lot of movement up front throughout the whole entire football game. Flemister, the fifth-year senior out of Georgia, on that last carry. Pit 4-5 on third down today. Third and 13. Oh, and the ball is on the ground as it hit the man in motion. They are fortunate enough to pounce on that one. A loss of three, and the punt team is coming out for Pitt. And that's the, the, those are the little things, right, that you got to work on with a young quarterback as far as when he gives the, the offensive line the signal to snap the ball when you're in that side on count. Right there, a missed opportunity, but look for them to easily tweak that to correct that so it doesn't happen throughout the game. Mumfield, the man in motion there, got hit in the keister. A serendipitous moment there for Wake Forest. Morin to field, lets it sail over his head, and it bounces into the end zone. Wake Forest will begin their next drive in just a moment. Take it away from the opponents that they've played against this year. Marucci begins at his own 20 to Ellison off on the left side makes a man miss breaking some tackles and out of bounds after an eight yard gain. That's the end of the first quarter. And that'll do it for the first. Santino Marucci the young fella took a shot earlier. He couldn't capitalize. Went Second and three for Marucci, the handoff to Ellison, pushing the pile, has enough for the first down. A four-yard gain for Ellison, as this thing has been a journey for Wake Forest, their first first down of the game, and it happens here early on in the second quarter. Yeah, a lot of carries for Ellison so far, and he continues to show his power. Low center gravity only being 5'10", but that 209 pounds comes in handy when you have to move the pile, as we just saw with picking up that first down. Wake Forest on their first two drives, six yards total, 10 already on this drive. First and 10 from the 31 yard line. Marucci hands it off again. And Ellison tripped up, perhaps by the turf monster as he bangs on the ground there, realizing he missed an opportunity. A short gain of three. Yeah, seeing him pound on that floor like that. You could tell if he's just able to just get through that hole, there's a lot more daylight because he would have been able to split those two defenders at the second level. Keyshawn Williams in motion. Play action. Marucci to throw. Sets up the screen to Williams. Williams spinning out of trouble. Not for long as he's taken down at the 32-yard line. A loss of two on the play. Bengali Kamara brings him down and that's where they're going to have to be better today you know the perimeter blocking the nice easy throws those are the ones that take all 10 guys blocking in order to have success and you know the wide receivers are going to have to be sticky with who they have in their blocking assignments to find success with the easier throws like that third and nine not the situation you want to be in with a young quarterback diamond formation at the top another screen to Keyshawn Williams Williams taken down after a short gain there, four yards is the gain, and the punt unit will be coming out again. MJ Devonshire awaiting Mora's punt at the 21-yard line. MJ Devonshire last week, big pick six in the game against Louisville. The Jim Thorpe National DB of the week. 
and lets it bounce in front of him. He's going to grab it at the 30. He's got room to run heading towards the sideline and taken down at the 48-yard line. That's why it's one of the best conferences in America. Orlando Franklin, George Sedano, Maryland Payne with you here as Pitt is driving again, and Christian Bayer tosses it out to the boundary to Kanate Mumfield. Not much there. They'll lose a yard on the play. And there wasn't much there because their best cover guy from Wake Forest, Carson, just was able to fight through the block and be able to make that tackle right there. Great job by him. Kalen Carson, the junior from Maryland. Had six tackles last week. But to your point, he is their best cover guy. They'll move him into the nickel from time to time because they like to match him up on certain guys. Bayer, plenty of time here. Tosses it, but his receiver met immediately. Bub Means, after a six and a half yard gain, Deshaun Jones was right there. Deshaun Jones from Baltimore, Maryland. And Deshaun does a great job of reacting, but right there you see the young Christian Bear, where a young quarterback is going to struggle. He had that hitch where if he gets that ball out sooner, it, instead of a, being a six yard gain, it might be an eight or ten yard gain if he just lets it rip a little bit faster. Third and six for Bayer, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Pit four of six on third down. Wake. Having some guys creep up at the line of scrimmage. Bayer with time, tosses it out. And complete for a first down to Bub Means. A seven yard gain to Marcus Rankin. And it's just been very easy for Christian Bear right now because these quarterbacks for Wake Forest continue to play off coverage and give these wide receivers so much space. So nice easy throws and the wide receivers are getting those yards after the catch. Rankin with the tackle there. Bayer keeps it, tries to get to the outside, can't turn the corner. Let's go down to Maryland. Orlando, you mentioned Christian yeah, Bayer yeah. having a little bit of a timing hiccup and throwing too late from his own perspective. He was throwing too soon so much of last week, trying to get his timing on schedule, making the conversion from a backup to a starting quarterback is part of what he's working through right now. Two yard loss for Bayer. What do you make of young Bayer? I think he's been good. You know, I think uh, offensive coordinator Frank Sinetti has done a great job with how he's called the game so far for the young quarterback to allow him to feel comfortable out there. 12 of 15, 93 yards, has the touchdown. Got plenty of time over the middle. It is caught and complete. A six yard gain for Christian Veyer to the running back Rodney Hammond out of the backfield out of Norfolk, Virginia. A six yard gain, third and seven upcoming. Yeah, just nice little China route, easy route. And Christian Bear looking for the deep ball, but checking it down right there to Rodney Hammond to make it nice and third and manageable right here. They are four of four on this drive. Third and seven from the 34 yard line of Wake Forest. It has been in total control. They are under center. It is fourth and seven. Decision time for Pat Narduzzi, and it looks like the offense is staying out on the field. Yeah, great job by Quincy Bryant right there, but left tackle, Branson Taylor got blown up. Right here, I like this decision by Pittsburgh. Going for it right here, though. Pitt, seven of 13 on fourth down this season. Thayer, pressure coming. Over the middle, too high for his intended target, Kenny Johnson. And Wake Forest will take over at their own 36-yard line. I like the decision right there, but right there, if you're Christian Vera, you got to be able to get the football down and throw a better football right there. But, you know, Wake Forest offense hasn't done anything all day. So great job by the offense line picking up the blitz. But Christian you know, Chris Ball and Heisman Trophy winner Gino Toretta at your alma mater, Orlando. I love it. It's all about the U, baby. <laughs> Claiborne wrapped up in the backfield. A loss of three on the play. Santino Marucci with the lineage of his father playing for a national championship team as David Green took him down. Now, being the son of a football player who won a national championship can be a blessing and a curse, though, I would imagine, too, no? Um, there's a national championship ring in the household, so I think it's just a <laughs> blessing. I never won a national championship, George. <laughs> 
I'm sure Jason Marucci is extremely proud of Santino getting his first start. Congratulations to the family and another run there. Deion Hayes takes him down behind the line of scrimmage and you're starting to hear the rumblings and the boos from the fans here. Let's go down to Maryland. As you might expect, very proud parents, to your point, of Santino Marucci taking pictures every down from him up here in the stands. Mom got the camera out in a moment that certainly these parents have waited nonstop for, although Wake needed more from, unfortunately. He did have that one shot down the field. He put it on the money. Third and 13 for Marucci. Marucci rolling out of the pocket, pressure coming. He takes the hit, throws it down the field, and it is intercepted. But a flag on the play. Interception made by Marquez Williams. But let's see what the laundry's about. If the interception stands, it'll be pit ball at prior to the pass. Holding defense number 14. Ten yard penalty with an automatic first down. So Pitt will not start the drive at Wake's 48 because Quez Williams, who intercepted the ball with the infraction. Yeah, just getting a little handsy right there, right? You know, in a situation like that, you have to allow this young, pit, inexperienced Wake Forest offense make their mistakes if you're Pittsburgh. You don't want to sit there and get handsy or anything like that. Make them, force them to be perfect. I thought that was a little bit too aggressive right there. First down and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Marucci. Directing traffic as Claiborne in the pistol formation behind him. They hand it off to Claiborne. Claiborne trying to push the pile and slither through the defenders. A two-yard gain for Claiborne, who is like a rocket ship, as the coaches told us this week. He is the fastest guy on the team. I mentioned earlier he had that kickoff return for a touchdown last week against Virginia Tech. Yeah, we saw it last week. You know, his explosive ability in the open field but Wake Forest has to find a way to be more consistent. They want to live in third and three to five. You've got to find a way to be more successful on first and second down and limit exposing yourself and the penalties that you have given yourself so far today. Marucci breaking tackles as he keeps it, dragging defenders to the 50-yard line. He'll be just a yard shy of the first down. Third and one upcoming. And Marucci right there just throwing his athletic ability, right? This guy played a little bit of, of safety for Wake Forest back in the fall, but he shows his physicality and the fact that he loves football and loves to put his head down and try to get what he could get. Wake 0 for 3 on third downs thus far in this one. Marucci under center, hands it off to Ellison on the right side, gets the first down. And they convert their first third down of the game. Bengali Kamara with the tackle and the crowd finally showing a little life satisfied with that particular result. Yeah, this drive, they've showed some things finally, right? They're able to insert their dominance right there, going to go get that third and one. MJ Devonshire dinged up on that play off on the sideline now for Pitt. Again, the Jim Thorpe National DB of the Week award winner last week, Marucci. Hands it off to Ellison. Great patience there. Bouncing out to the outside. Still going. Stays on his feet and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Javon McIntyre chases him out of bounds after a 16-yard game. And now Wake is rolling. Yeah, great rhythm right there. Offensive line being able to play a little bit of bully ball and insert their dominance a little bit into the game. But great patient by Justin Ellison right there, bouncing it out to the right side to go get 16. Longest play of the game thus far for Wake Forest. They hand it off again. Ellison taken down at the line of scrimmage. And that's what you got to stay away from, right? You have a nice explosive run, but now it's followed up by a tackle for a loss. If you're Wake Forest, you have to figure out a way to continue to... Timeout for an injury to a defensive player. If you're Wake Forest, you have to find a way to, to show a threat of throwing the football down the field. We'll have an update on the injured player. Devin Danielson in a moment. Devin Danielson walked off the field on his own power and just gave his teammates the thumbs up. Training staff testing out the strength in both of his shoulders. Unfortunately, though, star linebacker Simon Solomon DeShields is confirmed out, will not return today. 
Thank you, Maryland. Play action. Taking a shot down the field. Marucci incomplete. Intended for Banks. Sailed it a little too far for his wide receiver. Banks, of course, the Washington, D.C. native. And I think that's the problem when you run kind of a little slow mesh offense. You know, right here, you see Marucci, he's trying to push that ball. It's almost like he speeds up his throw and overthrows it a couple yards right there. So look for Marucci to try to correct that and, you know, maybe six inch under throw that pass later on in the game if he gets another opportunity. Third down, timeout, Pitt. Timeout, Pitt, they're first. Media timeout. Wake Forest with seven runs, one pass attempt on this drive. We'll pause again. And we'll see what Wake Forest can conjure up here on third and long. Missed opportunities, Orlando, for Wake Forest. Yeah, Marucci has to find a way to capitalize on the opportunities that present itself. A little, a perfect ball right there, but on the second one, a bit of an overthrow. So he just has to settle down and understand that he has to connect when the opportunities present itself. Third and ten. Wake. Hands it off to Claiborne, and he is buried behind the line of scrimmage. This had been the longest drive for Wake, and it's going to end in a long field goal attempt, potentially. A decision here for Dave Clawson, as Jordan Bass is the tackler that took down Claiborne. Do you just go for it here? Because you're kind of in no man's land. Yeah, I mean, I, I if I was out there, George, I'd be kicking the field goal. That's they're, what I would do. They're going for it. But they are going for it. Fourth so and very 11. interesting right here. Fourth and 11. And a an false start by number 55, Michael Jurgens. Yeah, second penalty on him today. False start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. And now the decision is much easier as you're going to punt this one away now yeah. you can't even get points yeah second penalty on the you know fifth year senior right there Michael Jurgens, and that's been Wake Forest all year all year they have had self-inflicted wounds where they haven't found a way to play a full 60 minutes of, of complimentary football MJ Devonshire back in this contest he's back there to field the punt from Mora and that one will sail over his head bounce at the five Take a wake bounce to the three, and they will down it there. A 36-yard punt, no return, and Mora did his job there. Excellent punting by Mora. I don't think it gets any better than that, George, right there, being able to, to down that football inside the five and force Pitt to try to go 97 yards. So heck of a job right there. Hopefully now your defense is able to rally and try to get a quick three and out if you're Wake Forest. Christian Vayer for the second time in the shadows of his end zone and the goalpost. They hand it off up the middle up to about the four and a half yard line. A short gain there for Flemiston. When you look at this Wake Forest defense, they play that 4-2-5, so their quarterbacks and DBs are going to be very active around the line of scrimmage all day. Heck of a job right there, just condensing the holes and not giving Pitt anywhere to run. We'll officially give him one yard on that run. Sebo Flemister, transfer from Notre Dame, fifth-year senior from Williamson, Georgia. Thayer drops back, quick toss, and the ball's on the ground. And are they going to say, no, now they're going to say incomplete. For a second, it looked like they were going to say it was a fumble. Incomplete pass. It's third down. Kalen Carson with the big hit on that particular play. Christian Bear has went at Kalen Carson twice with quick throws, and both times Kalen has been able to react and come downhill and have a big, explosive, impactful play. Great job of seeing it the whole time through on that play and reacting and coming downhill. But Means could not hold on. The Louisiana Tech transfer, fifth-year senior from Lovejoy, Georgia. Third and nine for Pitt. Bayer got time, throws it, and it is caught there by Means at the 15-yard line. Should be enough for the first down, and it is. Bob Means climbing the ladder. 
going up and getting it for his young quarterback. You know, those are big time plays right there that just make a guy like Christian Bear in his second start feel more and more comfortable as the game goes on. That's a big play there by Bayer. He doesn't show any signs of the game being too big for him in his second start. First and ten. Another toss to the outside. And Bub Means again picks up four yards on that play. I like the little bit of cockiness to Christian Bear right there, right? Two plays back to back going at, you know, Deshaun Jones both times right there. But wide receiver Bub Mims coming up big for him on both times. Under two minutes in the half. Now the clock will stop on every first down. We'll go back to the old school college football rules. Remember, that is no longer the case this season unless it's two, under two minutes in the second and fourth quarter. Bayer. Another toss to the boundary, incomplete, intended for Means, his favorite target on this particular drive. Third and six upcoming for Pitt. Better coverage right there by Deshaun Jones, a little bit closer. You know, typically he's about six to seven yards back at that cornerback position, but a lot closer to Bub Means on that one for the incomplete. Bayer's five of five on third downs today. They'll need him to go six for six if they want to put more points on the board and keep this drive alive. Four receivers for Pitt. Mumfield in motion. Four man rush. Pressure coming. Throws it and sails it over the head of Bub Means at the 32 yard line. Fourth down and Pitt will be forced to punt and another nice job by that Wake defense. Yeah, defensive line especially, right? You know, a good pass rush complements the back end. And right there, Wake Forest just rushing for being able to create some pressure and force Christian Vera to get rid of the football a little bit early right there for the incomplete. Taylor Morin at his own 30 to feel the line drive punt. He'll take it at the 38 and he gets popped and taken down at the 45 yard line. Tackle there by, has a chance here. Three timeouts, 146 to go. Curious to see their play selection. Yeah, they haven't ran a screen yet all today, so hopefully they pick it up, pull it out right now on this drive. Marucci checking with the sideline. Got time, goes down the field, he's got a man. Claiborne caught and complete inside the 35 yard line to the 32, but wait, 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 wait. After the 23-yard gain, we've got a flag on the play. Donovan McMillan with the tackle. Let's see what the laundry's about as the officials are congregating at the 32. I think we're gonna look at helmet, helmet maybe. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 30. 15-yard penalty of an automatic First down, Wake Forest number 23 may remain in the game because his helmet came off due to foul. Brandon George with the infraction for Pitt. Great pass by Santino Marucci right there. And you know, Damon Claiborne coming up big, showcasing that speed. Fastest guy on the football team, but a beautiful place ball right there to go get it. First time in the red zone for Marucci and Wake. First and 10 from the 18. And Claiborne breaking tackles and moves forward, dives towards the end zone for a touchdown, an 18 yard gain. Shot out of a cannon there. Claiborne, you see it. You saw the speed and you saw the power. And Wake Forest is within one. Unbelievable job right there by Desmond Claiborne. He shows you that he is like that rocket ship that this coaching staff has said. But the thing about this man, he has 11 broken tackles this year, George, on the season. Tied for second in the ACC. And he just goes with a full head of steam to go get that score and get Wake Forest on the board. So a heck of a job by that young man. Two plays, 55 yards, 14 seconds, all Claiborne. He caught the ball over the middle and then ran it in. When you're struggling as an offense, you're always looking for answers. So a heck of a job by Desmond Claiborne right there, putting it all on his shoulders, being able to go get 50 plus yards on two plays for his team. Claiborne 
His fourth touchdown of the season. From Virginia, King William High School. The extra point for Wake Forest. Low snap. The kick is up and good. And we are all knotted up at seven apiece with 1.32 to go in the second quarter. And Claiborne taking care of business for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, finds a way to squeak through there. But the most impressive thing is he doesn't try to stop his feet on contact. He looks to accelerate right there. And he's able to get to the end zone for his team. Arucci excited. And the young fella with a tall task as a third stringer. Marucci had never taken first team snaps until this week. He hadn't even taken second team snaps before. Still yeah. hasn't technically. <laughs> yeah, and he shows that the game is not too big for him. He's able to see it all the way through. Delivers a huge, you know, play down the field to get Claiborne and get in the red zone. So unbelievable job by this Wake Forest offense answering and understanding what's at stake right here, scoring before the half. Tyler Black to kick off for Wake Forest. He pops one up in the air. And it will go out of bounds. Flag will be on the play. I know he was trying to kick it to one of the upmen, but not a good decision because now. Kicking team, number 98. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. It puts Pitt in a good position with two timeouts and 92 seconds to go. Wake, by the way, on their first four drives, only 37 yards. That last drive, as I mentioned, 55 and a touchdown. Yeah, I think Pittsburgh wants to be aggressive right here. You know, last week, that's one thing that they did have going for them offensively was the deep ball. A lot of time left on the clock right now with a minute and 32 seconds. So they are going to have a couple shots. So let's see if they can sustain a drive and put some points on the board before the half. Rodney Hammond in the backfield. Vayer, the quick toss to the perimeter. It's caught, and he's pushed out of bounds. His receiver, Dejon Reynolds, will pick up the first down. Nice quick nope. little. Nope. Check that. Sorry. He's a yard shy of the first down, a nine yard gain. Yeah, great little route by Reynolds right there. Being able to get out of bounds as well. You know, good timing right there with him and his young quarterback. 128 to go. Bayer hands it off. And a short gain there for Hammond. Kevin Pointer with the tackle of the running back, Hammond, from Booker T. Washington High School in Norfolk, Virginia. Love the play call right there by Frank Sinetti. A lot of times offensive coordinators think they have to rush through that. No, just get the first down yep. and make sure that you move the sticks. So he gets the first down. Bayer, plenty of time. Out to the perimeter to his big tight end, Bartholomew. And a gain there of six yards. And that's what I've been surprised about. Not seeing a lot of Bartholomew so much. He's a great tight end, great hands, great speed. And, you know, they forced him teams to defend the middle of the field and he has been able to expose the middle field normally stops the clock with 109 to go you would think the tight end would be more of a safety valve wake with pressure coming the balls on the ground and Pitt is able to pick it up great pressure there moving on the field is an incomplete pass so they'll rule it incomplete but just so much pressure there the house came yeah. yeah, D.C., you know, Brad Lambert right there being aggressive. And I, and I like it. You're a blitzing football team. So just because it's under two minutes before the half doesn't mean that you have to get out of it or change what you do. Malik Mustafa and Jacob Roberts, the culprits there. Hand off. And Hammond trying to break contain, cannot do it. And that will keep the clock moving, too. Hazen does a great job of just read and run all the way and coming downhill to make a great tackle right there to bring up fourth down. Fourth down now, and the decision here, they're just going to let the clock run and punt it away, it looks like. 
Yeah, if you're Pittsburgh, you feel really good about what you've been able to do defensively. I know that Wake just scored on the last drive, but Wake has struggled to move the football. It doesn't make sense of taking a shot right here and giving the football away. So I like this decision. I would just punt it, go in at halftime, recuperate, and understand we got 30 minutes left in the football game. Let's see who wins the second half. Clock is still ticking. And 15 seconds now left on the clock for Pitt. That's nice defensive battle today, George. Trade and punches. Both teams playing really, really good defense. Surprised that Pittsburgh hasn't got it going offensively. So I can't wait to see what the adjustments that they make at halftime to see if they try to take advantage of some of the deeper throws and, and try to put up some more explosive plays. Flag on the field. I'm assuming that's going to be delay of game. But Narduzzi, I think, was trying to call a timeout, it looks like. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Because the clock was running and the foul caused the clock to stop immediately, this calls for a 10-second runoff, which occurred at 19 seconds. Please reset the game clock to nine seconds, and it will start on my signal. Adam Savoir, our lead official, clearing things up. A little bit of chess right there by Coach Narduzzi, understanding that if you get a penalty right there, that there is a 10-second runoff and a lot less time for Wake Forest. Maybe you don't need to run one play. I was curious because he was arguing something with the official, and I thought maybe that's, that's what... the end of the second quarter. And that'll do it as the clock does get run down. I thought he was arguing about a timeout, but apparently he was arguing about the runoff. Orlando, what do you make of this 7-7 battle? It's been all defense. You know, I think that Pitt picked up right where they left off last week playing against that powerful Louisville team. But um, offensively, I've been kind of shocked that Christian Bear hasn't had more opportunities at the deep ball. I think we've only seen one or two passes maybe all day. For both teams to try to pull out a victory here. Well, Wake Forest, you got to find a way to continue to be effective running the football, but take some shots. You know, cut the young quarterback loose. I get it. It's Marici's first start, but at some point, because he's already had six attempts at passing, at some point, you got to say, hey, we could come back to some things and, and really let him. But a lot of running for Wake Forest, as we expected. Santino Marucci hands it off here to Ellison in his first start. Marucci. Only thrown it a couple of times. A loss there of three on the play. MJ Devonshire and Javon McIntyre took down Ellison out on the perimeter. Now, right there, you, that's a failed attempt if you're Wake Forest. You know, you have to find a way to stay ahead of the down and distance. You cannot afford for the tackle for losses and end up in second and 13. Marucci in the gun, hands it off again. Ellison trying to turn the corner and cannot. A short gain again on that play. Actually, may actually will be a loss potentially. Yep, yep, a loss of one on the play. So they are going in the wrong direction for the young quarterback Santino Marucci and Dave Clawson doesn't look thrilled at the moment. Yeah, two plays, two tackle for losses for this Pittsburgh defense. You know, all game, Wake Forest has just shown that they can run the football. So they're aggressive right now coming out at half. Third and 13, and they hand it off to Ellison again. Ellison trying to get to the outside and cannot. Tripped up at the 25-yard line. Only a three-yard gain, and not what this fan base wanted to see coming out of the half. A very interesting play call right there. You know, three plays coming out at half, three runs back to back. And in a third and long situation, I thought that they would cut Marucci a little bit of slack on that third down to try to get him to push the ball down the field. As we saw right before half, him able to connect with Demon Claiborne, Demon Claiborne, sorry. The third, third, and the third three and out for Wake Forest. Mora with the punt, sky high. Devonshire lets it bounce, will field it on the bounce. Dangerous maneuver there as he goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A 48-yard punt, two-yard loss on the return. I get that MJ Devonshire is really talented and athletic, 
I, I'm fairly certain the coaches weren't necessarily thrilled with that fielding of the punt there. Yeah, in the first half as well, he had two balls that bounced early, but he was able to come up and, and go collect those balls right there. That one's very interesting because he had to catch it and he kind of ran out of bounds backwards a little bit. They are 17 to 25 for 130 yards and a tutty in that first half. Begins the drive at the 25 yard line. Handed off to Flemister. Flemister with a four yard gain. This young guy, Flemister, really excites me, George, because he has a timeout for an injury to a defensive player. We have a man down for Wake Forest. It's Dylan Hazen. And we will find out an update, hopefully, on Dylan's situation here in just a moment. and I love that they're recognizing this. No question about it. Great job by the ACC. Second and seven for Pitt at their own 28-yard line. And they hand it off in the backfield to Flemister. Kevin Pointer right at the point of attack for a three-yard loss. Kevin's the guy that makes the whole front go, you know, very active with how he plays the defensive tackle position. Right on that last play, just shot out of a cannon, being able to beat his guy and go get a huge tackle for a loss right there. Dylan Hazen was hurt on that last play prior to us taking a break. He's in the tent moment for Wade. A young man from the Woodlands, Texas, Pointer. Redshirt Jr. made that tackle from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Third and ten. There. Goes to the outside. He's got means for a touchdown. For a first down, rather. Sorry about that. A little too excited up here. I know that this is just an out route, but Bob Memes does a great job pushing the ball up the field, pushing it up the field, and then getting to the outside. But Christian Vera, that is a very hard throw. When you're on the left hash, throwing all the way to the opposite hash on an out route, that's not something that's just easily done. So a great NFL type throw right there by the young man in his second start. An 11 yard gain to the 36 yard line. I think I'm trying to uh, will some scoring in this game. <laughs> Bayer. Plenty of time, takes a shot down the field, but nobody home. Three black shirts actually out there, and it landed right in between them at the 30-yard line. A little bit of miscommunication right there, right? You know, you see Christian Berry, he understands that he's got an opportunity with the safeties playing a little bit low, but him and Bub Meems not on the same page on that last one. Meems going down the sideline. And Bayer going down the middle. Second and 10 from the 36. They're huddling up now. And again, we've got two young quarterbacks here. So there's going to be some miscommunications, some mistakes, certainly. Marucci on one end for Wake, and Bayer on the other end for Pitt. Bayer, plenty of time over the middle. Got him in, incomplete. It was Means again. Tried to make the one handed stab, but could not haul it in. Very interesting what Pitt has done coming out at halftime. You know, they were no how to hop that's in the first half. But right here, you gotta find a way to get that one. I think Bob Memes saw the little safety cross his face and, and took his eyes off the football right there. A massive third down right now coming up for this Pitt offense. Means the vocal leader of this offense. Could not get there. Third and ten. Pitt. On third downs, started 4 of 4, 3 of 8 since. Vayer, plenty of time, floats one down the sideline, incomplete, too high for Bartholomew. Bartholomew slowed down there, looked like he could have kept running and probably made that catch. Yeah, I think the sun might have gotten his, his eyesight a little bit late there. But right here, this is where the young Christian Bear has to get better. You know, a better ball, a ball that has a little bit more zip right there, and that's an easy completion instead of, you know, throwing that moon ball right there on the sideline. But Nick Anderson was also there to lay the hit, so Bartholomew had to pull up for that. I saw that on the replay. Ball bounces and takes a wake bounce as... The drive will begin at the 40-yard line, a 24-yard punt. Not good there for Pitt. Tough sledding for them, but... Plenty of time all day to throw over the middle. It is caught for a touchdown. And 
Claymore breaking tackles, moves forward, dives towards the end zone for a touchdown, an 18-yard gain. Shot out of a cannon there. Welcome back here to Winston-Salem, all knotted up at seven apiece. And we've got two young quarterbacks battling it out there. Christian Bayer, Santino Marucci making his first start. Bayer only his second start for Pitt. As they begin the drive at the 40-yard line, Wake hands it off to Devon Claiborne. Claiborne with a six-yard gain right up the middle. DeMond continues to just weave through traffic, man. He's been all everything for this Wake Forest offense. Other guys need to step up in this second half in order for Wake to pull off the victory. Second and six. Pitt showing blitz. And Marucci keeps and fools the Pitt Panthers and picks up the first down as he runs out of bounds near the 45-yard line. An eight-yard gain for Santino Marucci. Heck of a job right here. Just kind of understanding he's getting some pressure off the edge and pulling that one and using his legs and showing his athletic ability. First down at the 46-yard line of Pitt. Marucci doing it with his legs there. Handoff up the middle. Short gain there, about a yard and a half. Let's check in with Maryland. OC Warren Ruggiero said that he told Santino Marucci to start the week, don't go out there and try and be that guy for this offense. Let the leaders, the captains, lead this team. You just go out there and run the offense. But he didn't say he's such a confident guy. I know he believes he can lead Wake to a win. He certainly had a lot of confidence. They talked about that, but then you go out there, the coaches said, and it goes a little different, perhaps. So, Marucci in trouble, and he's sacked, taken down at the 48-yard line. A.J. Woods coming off that corner. A lot of heat, and he took Marucci down. Yeah, A.J. Woods bringing the corner pressure. What a heck of a job of seeing the football all the way right there on that last play and not being fooled and going to try to tackle the back and understanding that Marucci still has the football in his hands. Three-yard loss, third and 13 coming up. Wake is one of six on third downs. Marucci. Wide receiver screen to Keyshawn Williams, and he is taken down immediately as he bumps into his own man. Tackle made by Bam Brema, and he ran into the left tackle, Eric Russell, and that thing never got going at all. Yeah, when you don't have a threat of throwing the football down the field, you now allow the whole Pittsburgh defense to react and come downhill. They're read and run all the way. I know that Wake just threw the ball on a little receiver flank screen to the right right there. But at the same time, if you're not pushing the ball down the field, everybody's first step is going to be forward. Wake has to find a way to push the ball down the field to slow this defense down to Pittsburgh. They've had a couple of shots down the field. There's more of punts in here to MJ Devonshire. But they've only connected a couple of times. 47-yard punt, no return. It's time for our app. I have the answer. I sure as heck don't know the answer. First and 10 from the 20. They hand off to Flemister. Plenty of room to run. A lot of green grass in between. He gets tripped up at midfield. Flemister, a 30-yard gain as Chalen Garns finally takes him down. And that pit running game is starting to break through. A nice inside zone play to the right. And Flemister shows you that he could have success at every, le every level, right? And look for this young kid to play at the next level because he reads it one gap at a time, taking the backside hole for a huge explosive play for Pitt. Flemister, 10 carries, 67 yards on the day. 30-yard run there. Flemister again with room to run. Gets into the second level. Picks up seven yards. Malik Mustafa takes him down. Wake Forest plays that 4-2-5 defense. So if you're a Flemister, it's all about just getting past the first line of defense. You're going to be able to get on those safeties quick and every single time in the run game. Second and three from the 43-yard line. They're in Wake territory. They are changing the play at the line of scrimmage. 
Two tight ends to the left side. And that's where Flemister is going to try to run, but Wake was overloaded there and took care of business. A two yard loss. Aiden Hall, the first man on the scene. Fantastic job of just triggering and understanding that you have to come downhill in order to stop the momentum of Flemister, who's had some success on this drive so far. So great job by Hall making that tackle for a loss right there. Aiden Hall, true freshman, 6'2, 217 pounds from Pleasant Grove, Alabama. That's his eighth tackle on the season. Bayer, third and five. Mumfield in motion. Bayer got time. Finds Mumfield near the sticks, but might be short. It looks like he is about three quarters of a yard short after a four yard gain. Deshaun Jones from Baltimore, Maryland, with a nice stop. Yeah, Deshaun's a first-year starter for this Wake Forest defense, you know, but he has been coming along and moving forward, so a huge job reacting to bring up a fourth down right now. Fourth down and short, less than a yard, pit 0 for 1 on fourth down today. Bayer under center. Looks like there's room right in front of him. He could have just moved it forward. They hand it off to Flemister. He may be short of the first down. There was nobody lined up in front of the center. Bayer could have just pushed forward and gotten the first down, and they decided to hand it off there. Sometimes you overthink it, right? Earlier in the game, they went for it. They tried to do a quarterback sneak, and they weren't successful. So right there, overthinking it, trying to run off tackle. And, you know, Wake Forest's defense comes up with a huge stop, just being able to get downhill. And Roberts, just unbelievable right there, shooting the backside gap, making that play. Jacob Roberts. Did his job, Charlotte, North Carolina native, the senior from Mallard Creek High School and a transfer from North Carolina a and And Wake gaining some momentum there because Pitt looked like they were on the move. Yeah, got to find a way to be complimentary now as an offense. Defense did their job. Marucci hands it off up the middle to Claiborne, reaching out after a five-yard gain. Claiborne has to be careful there as Donovan McMillan took him down when he's stretching that ball out. Want to make sure you have that ball secure. Yeah, if I'm Wake Forest's coaching staff, I'm livid right now because the only time you should ever stretch the ball out is on fourth down or trying to get across the goal line. We'll give him a four-yard gain officially. Second and six for Marucci. Marucci keeps it. He launches it down the field for Morin. Incomplete, but a flag on the play. They took a shot down the field. Javon McIntyre was in coverage. And I think that flag is going to be on one of those DBs. It's going to be a PI on Javon McIntyre. There is no foul for defensive pass interference because the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It's third down. Wow, I'd love to see another look at that at the line of scrimmage. Wow, that is so interesting right there to me because the quarterback is allowed to try to push the ball down the field. I thought it was just his hand right there. Man. I, I couldn't tell on that particular angle, but the officials said it was tipped. That is an interesting call. I thought Taylor Morin did exactly what he needed to do as a wide receiver trying to fight back through the defender right there. Third and six. Marucci, they're one of seven on third downs. Marucci throws a dangerous pass, incomplete. Javon McIntyre in coverage there. That one intended for Taylor Moran. Pitts D does, gets the job done, understanding that whenever you move the pocket, you're going to try to get three levels. McIntyre does a heck of a job of keying in on Taylor Moran and not having, making sure that he's able to, to be there for the PBU. Another punt attempt for Wake Forest, now one of eight on third downs. MJ Devonshire to field it at his own 15. Mora awaiting the snap at his own third. Nice punt, Devonshire fields it, fair catch. Inside the 20, 
they will field it and give it to him at the 16. So that's where Pitt will start their next team, George. I'm more American now, 35. First to 10 here to flag on the play. Offense number 70. <laughs> Five yard penalty. First down. Offsides there. Pitt, their eighth penalty of the game. Number 70 is Ryan Bear. He has two flags on Ryan Bear today. You know, he's got to make sure that he sits in there. I get he's, he's a young player, but it hasn't been overly loud today. You cannot, you know, go backwards before you go forwards. He has to find a way to minimize those. I love how you tried to just eschew your uh, Canadian roots just because you haven't been there in 20 years. <laughs> Bayer, dangerous pass, batted away. Could have been picked off there. Kendron Wayman dropped back in coverage, the defensive lineman. And Vayer has got to be seeing ghosts after that one. Yeah, just a, a nice three-man rush. And right there, I, I don't know if he even looked over there. He just thought that Bob Mims was going to be open. He's got to make sure that he sees it before he lets it go. Because that could have been very dangerous for him. Vayer started off 13 of 15, now six of his last 16. And I'm wondering if that's because they've been huddling up more in the second half. You know, they did a lot of check with me in the first half. Second and 15, Bayer with time. Finds his receiver on a slant. Taken down just shy of the 20-yard line. Demarcus Rankin, the receiver, took down the receiver, rather. It was Kenny Johnson who caught the ball there. I like that play right there. Just getting back to the basics. Pitt's offense has found a lot of success running out routes and in routes. You know, Kenny Johnson comes up nice and big, a nice easy completion to bring up a third and manageable right now. Third and six. The crowd getting ramped up. Johnson in motion. Bayer with time over the middle. Dangerous pass again, incomplete intended for Johnson. But at least four black jerseys in the area as Kalen Carson got a hand on that one. And the timing right now is off for this Pitt Panthers offense. You know, in the first half, Christian Barris was very comfortable, but right here, everything, it looks like he has a second hitch and he's second guessing himself. He doesn't look as comfortable and confident as he looked in the first half, pushing the ball down the field. Fifth punt today for Pitt. Their punter Junko. Skies one. Morin will field it inside his 40. Cutting it towards the outside and wrapped up but a flag on the play. Excellent work there by Dylan Bennett. Great tackle there on special teams. A 41-yard punt, a zero-yard return as Morin went backwards as he was trying to cut to the outside. But let's see what the laundry's about. During the return, personal foul, illegal blindside block, receiving team number 10, 15-yard penalty, first down. So let's see the penalty here. Oh, yeah, that's an easy call on Ryland Gandy. He's got to just ease up, right? Understand that he couldn't make that block right there. Well, Wake Forest, you got to get it going right here. I know that you, you, you're you on your third string quarterback, but you got to find a way. Easy throws down the field, out routes, screens, you know, nice easy completions for Mar Marucci to get him feeling a little bit more comfortable, but to also to get the Pittsburgh defense to, to back up a little bit. Pittsburgh coming, Ellison up the middle. And not much there. Let's go down to Maryland. MJ Devonshire and company for Pitt's defense down here dancing before they just retook the field. And Devonshire said this week that having fun is actually what allowed this defense to get right in their bye week and then help stop Louisville for the win last week. And he said, we have to have fun every play. That's the difference in winning games and enjoying what we're doing and taking L's. He said they compiled against him to start the season. They want the right attitude now. Second and nine. Thank you, Maryland. Ellison tries to turn the corner. Picks up a couple of yards on the player. 
Yeah, this defense during their bye week two weeks ago got back to the basics, right? Worked their tackling drills and just the fundamentals of football. Not a lot of missed tackles today for this Pitts defense, only holding the Wake Forest offense to seven points. But M MJ Devonshire continues to show that he's one of the best corners in the ACC with his explosive ability. Got to keep it light out there. So I love that about him. Had a pick six last week. Jim Thorpe, National DB of the Week last week. Third and six. Marucci. Wide receiver screen to Keyshawn Williams, and Williams picks up the first down. They move the chains as Donovan McMillan takes him down. Nice job there by Wake Forest, keeping yeah. this thing going. Yeah, Keyshawn does a great job of weaving in and out of traffic, but an even better job of the wide receivers on the perimeter blocking for their, their receiver mate right there. Just their second third down conversion for the Demon Deacons. First and 10 from the 37 yard line. Marucci keeps and gets swallowed up in the backfield. AJ Woods again, another sack for Woods, a two yard loss. Pitt's defense is one of the defenses that are, have a very high percentage of blitz from the secondary. AJ Woods, another huge sack on the day. He's showing that he's coming early, but Marucci just, Mar Marucci just did not see him coming right there. A huge sack right there for this defense. Woods has got both sacks for Pitt today. Claiborne cuts back inside, four yard gain. I'm surprised Wake Forest all day today, George, has not even ran one screen to the running back and just tried to clear the defenders and that first line of defense for Pitt, especially with the court, a young quarterback like Marucci struggling out there today. I am curious as well. Diamond formation out to the left side. Third and seven from the 40. Marucci got time. Slings one. Intercepted. Intercepted by Philip O'Brien Jr. P.J. O'Brien comes up with the pick. And Marucci got a little greedy with that one. Yeah, that one, I know the young quarterback wants that got time. Lofts one down the field, sails it over his intended target, Mumfield. Kalen Carson in coverage. And great job by Kalen Carson understanding that he has the right to that spot, being able to get in Mumfield's way so Mumfield cannot push it up to the depth that he needs in order to have a chance of catching that football for Christian Bale. Diamond formation to the near side. Quick toss to Means on a wide receiver screen. And Means gang tackled at the 39-yard line. A gain of five, third and five upcoming. This Wake Forest defense continues to play hard. I know things haven't went the right way for them this season, but man, they rally to the football. Every single time there's a tackle on the field, you see a couple Wake Forest black jerseys out there. Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator, for Wake Forest, I asked him the factors of success this season in his second year as DC. He said the people in the room, number one, number two, the second year of the system and familiarity and just good football awareness. Third and five for Pitt. Thayer got time over the middle, has got a man, it's Means, breaks a tackle, now scooting up the field, taken down near the 30 yard line. A big first down there for Bub Means. Quincy Bryant eventually dragged him down after a 31-yard game. And that is the end of the third quarter. Pitt driving here as we head into the final frame. Yeah, just a great deep in cut by Bub Means connecting and being able to have success. And Bub Means shows that physically he could do all those things. But the thing that I've been the most impressed was his ability to absorb the hits in the open field. They said he had a great center of gravity. First and 10 from the 30. A wildcat here by Flemister, and he pushes forward after nearly a five yard gain. That might be one of those wrinkles that you just want to get that on film, right? <laughs> Make the next team or teams later on during the season have to defend it. Wildcat right there by Flemister. A successful run, though, to be able to get over four yards right there. Second and six now. They are under center. Mumfield in motion. They hand it off to Flemister on the left side. Picks up another couple of yards. Brandon, excuse me, Bryce Gaines on the tackle there from Houston, Texas. 
Yeah, if you're awake right now, you feel very comfortable and confident. You know, just this third down. This might be the biggest third down of the day, of the day for Wake. You got to find a way to get off the field and force Pitt to kick a field goal right here. Third and three upcoming. Pitt eight of 16 on third downs today. There. Mumfield in motion. Handed off to Flemister, and he is tackled behind the sticks. Might be right at the line of scrimmage. So, no gain. Fourth and three coming great, up. Great job by Kendron Wayman. Just understanding up on block and shooting the gap right there to get that tackle for a loss and bring up the fourth down. Nick Anderson was first on the scene there. And now Ben Souls, a field goal attempt of 41 yards. Souls, the kick is good. And that gives Pitt a three-point lead. Ben Souls doing his job. Pitt gonna try to hold on. Watch it on the app so you can watch anywhere. Our two quarterbacks here, two young players. Marucci for Wake Forest making his first start there. Making his second start for Pitt. The kickoff sails through the end zone. I would imagine you're not thrilled hearing the news about your alma mater and Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, absolutely not. You know, I think this is a huge game for Miami and Clemson tonight. So for me, if Tyler Van Dyke is not able to go, the second string quarterback, unfortunately, is never as good as the first string quarterback. What do you make of these two today, though? I think Christian Vera has done a good job in his second, second start. But, you know, Mariucci, I'm looking for him to cut it loose a little bit. He's missed on some deep throws that I know that he wants those back because that was what have been able to capitalize on momentum. Wake starts at their own 25. Ellison sheds a tackler, but not for long as it's a one-yard loss on the play. Deion Hayes, the tackler there. Yeah, and that's what happens when you're not able to throw the ball down the field as a defense. You're just coming downhill. Your first step is forward every single time. You're not going to step backwards because Wake Forest hasn't been able to push the ball down the field at all today. Hayes with the tackle. Another run here. And Ellison trying to slither through, but a short gain on that one. Wake total plays, 31 runs, 11 passes. And right now, with a third and long coming up, if you're Pitt, the, the whole entire playbook is up. Pitt loves to be aggressive. They love to blitz. And they've had success today. So right now, this is a tough situation for this Wake Forest offense. The crowd here rumbling, not thrilled with what they're seeing at the moment. Third and nine from their own 26. Marucci throws it down the field. He hits Banks right in the breadbasket. Dropped a dime. Marucci to the Washington DC native Banks for 33 yards and a big first down. And that might be the spark that this Wake Forest offense needs. Jamal Banks is their specializer in contested catches. A huge catch right there for him. They're at the 26 yard line, or rather the 46 yard line. That pass to Taylor Morin. want to be able to get that ball up a little bit but I like the back-to-back -back passing plays now you're able to kind of get this pit defense on their heels a little bit because you've had two successful passing plays second and six from the 38 Ellison pushing forward cuts back inside Javon McIntyre takes him down he's about two yards or so shy of the sticks and this is where you want to live. You want to live in this world with your young quarterback in his first start, right? You don't want the third and eight. Third and two, you have the threat of running, but also throwing as well. Third and two from the 33. Ellison. No. Stop there at the line of scrimmage. Bengali Kamara. Excellent work there defensively. 
Pitt brought the house on that last one. Kamara does a heck of a job making a, a great tackle on the elusive Ellison. But right here, it's going to be very interesting to see what Wake does. Fourth down and two, and they are staying on the field. Marucci hands it off to Ellison, trying to turn the corner, and he's met. And it looks like it's going to be just shy. Clawson kind of waving, trying to will the officials to call a first down. For an official measurement. But they're going to measure, as you heard there. Nate Temple was the first player there for Pitt. Yeah, this Pittsburgh defense doing a great job of just rallying to the football on that last one. It's going to be extremely close to see if Wake Forest was able to pick this up. The fans you saw there. They are waiting on bated breath. Looks to be just shy, and it is turnover on downs. The pit defense is celebrating. Unbelievable job right there, right? You know, offense goes down, scores their points. Defense has a huge stop on fourth down right there. Unbelievable job of just playing complimentary football and playing off of each other, swarming to the football to be able As Pitt has a three-point lead with 10.02 to go in the fourth. Yeah, Pitt's defense on that last drive, George, just picking up right where they left off last week. Now, today, they have two stops on fourth down. Last week, they had four against Louisville, so a great job transitioning from last week to this week for that defense. And off to Flemister, bounces it out to the outside, picks up a nice chunk of change there. The clock will continue. Let's check in with Maryland. The encouraging thing about this Wake Forest sideline is that their demeanor offense and defense has not changed the entire game. Not after a turnover, not after a big completion to Jamal Banks. This team is down here completely focused and very even keel in terms of their emotion and their celebration. Nothing beyond what you might expect in a big play, and then it's right back to lock in on business. Thank you, Marilyn. Well, that's good sign, certainly. They're right in it. It's only a three-point game, but it has been tough sledding on offense for both teams, really. They are under center on second and four. They hand it off to Flemister, spinning out of trouble and picks up the first down as he gets into Wake territory. An eight-yard gain. Excellent run there by Flemister. Yeah, great tough run in, in between the tackles right there by Flemister. He continues to turn those legs and make guys miss. But just going back to what Maryland said, if I'm Wake, it is a one-point game. It's a one-score game, so there is no need to panic as a football team because you're right back in there. Just got to play good football and find a way to stop them on defense and get another opportunity. If you're Pitt, though, a field goal, the way these two teams have played offense, could put you in an incredible position. Play action, Veyer rolling to his right, tosses it out. He's got a man complete at the 50-yard line. A five-yard gain, and it'll be, check that, a four-yard gain, and it'll be second and seven coming up. Daniel Carter, the running back, out of the backfield. Yeah, Carter just does a great job of just getting out there in open space. Nice, easy throw. Gotta love what Pittsburgh has done today, dispersing the football around to multiple people, multiple backs in there. And Daniel Carter just coming out on that last play out of the backfield. And off to Flemister. Tries to spin out of trouble there and taken down at the 47 yard line, a two yard gain. By the way, on the previous run by Flemister, where he had it looked like he had broken into Wake Forest territory, they had called him down earlier. Timeout for an injury to a defensive player. And the officials did not notify us of that. We do have an injury on the field. Deshaun Jones, the redshirt sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland, who's had a very good game in this one. We will pause to get an update on Deshaun Jones. I'm here in Winston-Salem. Deshaun Jones injured. And the redshirt sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, from Mount St. Joseph High School, is the leading interception in, in, interception player 
in the ACC, gets hurt there. Looks like an arm injury, Orlando. Yeah, if he's not able to go for this Wake Forest defense, that's going to be a massive blow. He is huge for what Brad Lambert likes to do defensively with his cover skills because this defense loves to apply pressure to opposing team's quarterback. So if he can't go, that's going to be a, a massive loss for this defense. He is out of the tent right now, we're being told, and jogging around at the moment. So good news there. Flemister in the backfield, third and three. Flemister trying to avoid the tacklers and cannot. A one-yard loss. Jasheen Davis, the junior from Belleville, excuse me, Snellville, Georgia. Jasheen Davis right there, no hesitation. Understand, I'm not going to block. Great job of shaving the edge to come up with a huge tackle for a loss on third down right there. Big play, and it's fourth down, and the offense is still on the field for... And that will send out the punt unit, I'm sure. That might have been the play of the game right there for this Wake Forest team. You know, being bailed out right there because those fourth and two to three yards, the whole entire playbook is up. So a heck of a job of Wake getting off the field right here. But Pittsburgh's defense is going to have to go out there and rally one more time. Taylor Morin set to receive. End over end punt. He will fair catch it at the 11-yard line. A 36-yard punt, no return. Coming up next, the ACC Huddle Crew will be back with highlights of two. And Wake Forest, 6.05 to go, fourth quarter, trailing by three. What's the conversation like with the youngster, Santino Marucci, making his first start, Orlando? Got to protect the football, right? Don't let that football out of your hands unless you are about 90% sure that it's going to be a completion. But everybody has to dig deep on this drive for this offense. Play action. Marucci rolling to his right, now under pressure, and throws it out of bounds, but a flag on the play. Could be holding on Pitt. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're going to get. Prior to the pass. Holding, defense, number 14. 10-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Marquez Williams with the infraction. Cardinal Gibbons High School, fifth-year senior from Pompano Beach, Florida. Yeah, I think they were trying to hit a double move with the sprint right action right there. And Marquez Williams just got a little handsy, not allowing the wide receiver to get downfield. First down now from the 21-yard line. Claiborne in the backfield with Marucci. Claiborne takes it, tries to shoot the gap. Picks up a couple of yards. Tyler Bentley with the tackle after the five-yard gain. Well, we'll call it four. Yeah, the power that Claiborne shows and displays on that run. It should have been a gain of one, but his lower body and that lower center of gravity just keeps on pushing to go get four right there. Second and a long five. And Claiborne still fighting for yardage. Picks up another couple of yards. Tyler Bentley again with the tackle. The fifth year senior from Ohio. This has to be the best play call of the day for this Wake Forest offense to convert this third down right here. It's third and, and manageable. So hopefully they're able to move the chains. Third and three. Wake Forest three for 12 on third downs. They hand it off to Claiborne again. He cuts inside, picks up the first down. He's got room to run and taken down. Just past the 45-yard line to the 46. Donovan McMillan trips him up after an 18-yard gain. And Wake Forest is in business. A great run by Claiborne. Looks to be a little bit shaken up on that one. Hopefully he's able to go, but he shows the patience, and when he sees the hole, he hits it full head of steam like a rocket ship to be able to get that explosive on the ground. Ellison now checks in in the backfield. First and 10 from the 46-yard line. Still a ways to go for Wake Forest. Got to dig deep. Everybody has to do their job to find success. Marucci, pressure coming. Throws a screen. It's batted in the air, but Ellison able to grab it and runs it into pit territory to the 49-yard line, a five-yard gain. Certainly a fortuitous 
bounce there for Wake Forest. Great job by Ellison just watching that football. MJ Devonshire tipped it, but Ellison does a great job just tracking the football to, to get that completion and be able to go get five on the ground. Second and five for Marucci in his first start. Pitt showing pressure. Marucci checking with the sideline. Marucci hands it off. A trick play on a reverse to Banks. Banks trying to turn the corner. He does. He picks up the first down and hit out of bounds. No flag on the play, but they get the first down yardage. Philip O'Brien and A.J. Woods on the tackle. A seven-yard gain for Wake Forest. Lots of razzle-dazzle for seven yards. Jamal Banks does a heck of a job running the football, but the person that made that play is Cameron Hitt, the tight end, doing a great job of being sticky, blocking down the field right there to get that first down. Demon Claiborne now checks in on first down. Claiborne with room to run. Breaks it to the open field. He's going to go. A touchdown. 42 yards for Claiborne. And Wake Forest takes the lead with 3-0-2 to go in this one. DeMond Claiborne, he was big in the first half and he's big in the second half. Just a nice off tackle run to the left and he showcases his speed. He's one of the fastest guys on this football team and if you need a big play, you gotta dial up 23. 23 once again comes up huge for this Wake Forest offense. The extra point. Low snap is up and good. Claiborne, 14 carries, 96 yards, and two touchdowns. A house call for Claiborne. Will it be enough for Wake Forest? Yeah, knowing that all you can do as an offense is run the football, and yet him, Claiborne, to be able to gap two touchdowns, it's been absolutely amazing by that young man. And Kenny Johnson lets it sail over his head. It bounces between the words Wake and Forest. And Pitt will begin their next drive, and likely their last drive, at their own 25-yard line. What do you want to see from this Pitt offense? Get back to the basics. On the first drive of today's game, where Pitt was able to march down the field easily, it was 13 plays, 11 passes, 5 runs. You have to find some kind of balance on this drive to go try to win the football game. Christian Veyer and company break the huddle. Sebo Flemister to his left. The crowd is getting amped up here at a legacy stadium. They are with time. Sails it way over the head of Bartholomew. Those two were definitely not on the same page. Yeah, that pass right there is in no man's land. You have Bartholomew right there and also uh, Reynolds, but it was in between both of them. I don't think either one of those guys know where the ball was going on that one, George. Got to settle down, though, if you're Christian Vare. I get it. You know, this is only your second start, but there's a lot of time on the clock. Pitt has three timeouts. Why not run the ball a little bit here? Yeah, I would be mixing and matching for sure, and the two-minute warning as well. Vare rolling out of the pocket. Pressure coming, lost one out of bounds. Sorry, not the two-minute warning. I was saying the new rules of college football, under two minutes, the clock stops after getting the first down. So I don't know why you didn't have to turn this into a throw fest, but now being third and ten, you're definitely going to have to go push the ball down the field to try to get this first down. Third and long. And the crowd is getting going. Some of them have left early. They shouldn't have left early. Shame on you for leaving early. It's homecoming week. I know the tailgate's got to be good, but the game got real good. They are on third and ten from his own 25. Time in the pocket. Over the middle. It is caught. His receiver, Dejon Reynolds, with a big first down there. And he'll be taken down at the 49-yard line. A 24-yard gain. And Vayer 
with some moxie there. A deep in cut by Dejon Reynolds right there. Great job by this offensive line protecting. But everybody's sitting in there when this place is just rocking, being the loudest that it's been all day. So a heck of a job by Pittsburgh converting that one. And the crowd getting loud again for those that say that this place doesn't have passion. That's not the case. Bartholomew with a catch down to the 43-yard line. It'll be about two yards shy of the first down, an eight-yard gain. Yeah, Garns makes a huge tackle meeting Bartholomew right there. But I've been surprised how Pitt has used Bartholomew today. I thought it, today would have been a big game for him with his skill set. Second and two, Veyer hands it off to Flemister, dancing in the backfield, breaks into the second level, picks up the first down as he's down at the 35-yard line, an eight-yard gain. Flemister, holy jump cut, right? It looks like he's going to get stopped for a short game, but he's able to jump and accelerate through the line of scrimmage. This young man has done an unbelievable job today of finding space and creating up, getting yards for his offense. 21 carries, 103 yards for Flemister. The crowd amping up again. Bayer all day to throw. Launches one to the sidelines, caught by Means for another first down. And now we're seeing Christian Bear take the next step. Understanding that Bob Means is going against a little bit of zone right there. Christian Bear with an unbelievable ball right there on the sidelines. That's what you want to see from your young quarterback, taking the next step. So great job hooking up right there with Bob Means. 13-yard gain, clock stops after the first down. One minute and 36 seconds to go. Means with eight catches, again a career high. Bayer. The Wake Forest crowd worried a bit. Pressure coming. Fayer launches one to the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. 22 yards to Bob Means. The vertical threat. They talk about his center of gravity. They talk about how he takes the top off. You witnessed it right there. Big time players make big time plays in big time games. Going to Bub Memes right here. I love it. Nice skinny post. Christian Fair, perfect throw. A great job in protection with this offensive line. A great throw by Christian Fair, knowing that Wake Forest was blitz in the house right there. The extra point for Ben Sauls is up and good. And Sauls has been perfect today on extra points. Perfect today on a field goal. Reminds me of my partner on radio on ESPN Los Angeles, Scott Kaplan, who was a pit break at kicker. Saul's showing his skill set as well here today. But let's take a look at that touchdown one more time, Orlando. Yeah, just an unbelievable answer by this pit defense. Going to a guy that's played a lot of football, playing all over the place, started his career at the University of Tennessee playing DP, and right there makes a huge grab. He, he went up and grabbed the game right there, George. Air four of six for 67 yards and a touchdown there to Means. Stepping up when it counts. Claiborne set to receive. Remember, he ran one back last week in a loss to Virginia Tech, and he has been the man today on offense for Wake Forest. He lets that one go and sail through the end zone as it bounces right in the O of Wake Forest. Coming up tonight at 8 Eastern, 4-2 Clemson Tigers take on the 4-2 Miami Hurricanes at Hard Rock Stadium. West Durham, Tim Hasselback, Taylor Tannenbaum on the call. Also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Again, Tyler Van Dyke, a game time decision according to our Pete Thamel. I know that uh, that, didn't, that worried you a little bit against a great Clemson defense for your alma mater. Yeah, the, set, the backup quarterback is never as good as the first string quarterback, so hopefully TBD is able to go. But Wake Forest, you got to find a way right now to get something going. If I'm Wake Forest, I'm trying to hit him with a screen at some point on this drive. Santino Marucci at his own 25. He's got time. Now flushed out of the pocket, he tucks it and runs and dives forward 
to the 27-yard line. Long developing play right there for Wake Forest. But right now, the best thing that I just saw was just the back end of Pittsburgh being very good in their coverage skill, not giving Marucci anywhere to go with the football. Only a two-yard gain, but does get out of bounds. 1.22 to go. Second and eight. They're going to have to take some shots down the field, although they do have three timeouts. So they, they don't have to abandon the run completely. Pitt showing blitz. Marucci, dangerous pass there, but a flag on the play. A.J. Woods in coverage as Morin was the intended target. Let's see what the officials say. Prior to the pass, holding defense number nine. Ten-yard penalty with an automatic first down. A.J. Woods caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah, just being a little over aggressive right there on Morin. But if you're A.J. Woods, you got to find a way to just maybe back up a little bit. You don't have to be pressed up so close to the wide receiver right now. Understand where the sticks are and react to the football. Keep everything in front of you. They only need a field goal to tie. 119 to go. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. Marucci flings one down the field. It's caught by Banks inside the 40-yard line. Jamal Banks, what a catch there. He is their specialist when it comes to contested catches, and we just saw a huge explosive play right there by Jamal Banks. They're letting the young guy fling it, and a 26-yard gain. First and 10 from the 37 whistles. Timeout. Pitt, their first. 30 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 108. Matt Narduzzi wants to talk it over. What is he saying to his team? You got to be able to find a way to, to rally. Maybe I like this timeout right here for Narduzzi because it gives your defense a time to catch their breath. Maybe, maybe you could dial up some pressure right now for the young Marucci. So the defensive coordinator, Randy Bates out there talking to the squad. Let's take a look at that last play. What did you see? By far the best throw of the night for Marucci, but Jamal Banks continues to show his athletic ability and the body control in space. Just unbelievable job catching the ball right there by this young man. A huge conversion for, for this Wake Forest offense. Jamal Banks, what a fantastic job there. Tate Carney checks in in the backfield. The third running back for Wake Forest. Marucci launches one, and it's picked off! MJ Devonshire, but a flag on the play. There's a man down as well. It's going to be interesting what the flag is right here. Injured player on the field is Jamal Banks, who made that incredible catch earlier. Yeah. The officials huddled up. I think they're going to get one of Pittsburgh's players pulling him off the pile because we saw some guys trying to grab Jamal Banks after that play right there. Banks is jogging off the field on his own with a slight limp. But the officials still huddling up. There are multiple flags on the field, so I'm wondering if there might be two penalties there. There's three, actually. Yeah. The result of the play is an interception. After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, Pittsburgh number three pulling an opponent off the pile. That penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal. Also after the play, on sportsmanlike conduct, Pittsburgh number three is second of the game. That penalty will also be enforced half the distance to the goal, and number three is ejected. And that is Donovan McMillan who has been ejected, the strong safety. So P.J. O'Brien will have to play strong safety here, but what did you see on this play? M.J. Devonshire, just unbelievable. He has came up huge for this Pittsburgh defense. He has three pick sixes, got one last week against Wade, but just a great job in coverage right there, understanding Jamal Banks' ability and how he goes up and makes acrobatic catches, but great job to see in the football the whole entire time right there to come up with a huge interception to seal the game. Now, Wake still has three timeouts. Let's check in with Maryland. 
Evanshire remembered vividly that he got beat for a touchdown by Wake Forest in the ACC championship game. He said, I want an interception and absolute lockdown coverage this week for him. He said this was personal. Pitt is facing Wake Forest for the third time in their history. As Marilyn mentioned, the second one was in the 2021 ACC championship game. A run there by Flemister and a timeout, timeout. Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Their first. 30 seconds. Their first meeting was here in 2018. Pitt is 2-0 and and trying to make it 3-0 with one minute to go deep in their own territory. Yeah, if you're Coach Narduzzi, you just want to run the football, right? Put that right now in this timeout. I'm talking to the big fellas. I'm telling the offensive line, go win this football game. One first down. That's all we need. Go win this football game. We have nine yards to get. We have two downs to get nine yards. You've got to be able to go out there and find success right now. ACC PM this week for Pitt. Trying to ice this game. They hand it off. And flags on the play. Ball is actually at the nine. Again, the scoreboard here at the stadium had it at the 12 initially at the line of scrimmage, so our apologies. That's the second time it's happened in the scoreboard today. Holding offense number 68. The penalty is declined. It's third down. Blake Zabovic with the infraction. Yeah, he's been banged up early in the year, you know, get him back out there. He's played a lot of snaps for this pit team, but right there, that, that cannot happen. Stops the clock, and it brings up third and long as well. And keeps two timeouts for Wake, as you mentioned, because it stopped the clock. Third and nine. Bayer keeps it. He's got the first down. Slides. Oh, wait. Wait a second. He may have started to slide short of the first down. He is irate and giving the official an earful. On that angle, it looked like he had it even when he began to slide, Orlando. Can we see it one more time? Because I'd love to see how close he was. So where does he begin his slide? Ooh. See, that's the trick, right? It's, it all, it's always about where do you initially yeah. start to pull up yeah. and where that football is. Yeah. I think he I is think he's short, short. Yeah. but I think he's closer than what we have marked on the field Agreed. right now. Agreed. So it might not be 12 inches. He might just be short six inches. Right, which is a big difference, obviously, with fourth and one upcoming. Yes. Yeah, Wake, Wake Forest took a timeout here. So there's one timeout on the board for them. Let's let's take a another look if we can. Ooh, I don't know on that angle. It looks like he may have it, but again, it's not a direct down the line angle. Yeah. Well, it's fourth and one. They're punting. Yeah. And that one's tricky because you we want to stay in bounds, right? You want to keep the clock going, and it's right there but on the sideline. But line. he had room still. Yeah. He could have done it. He could have kept going for a little bit. And a bad punt here. Out of bounds. Morin takes it near midfield, giving Wake Forest a perfect opportunity with excellent field position. Oh, the fireworks are queued up, man. This is a great opportunity for this Wake Forest team. You couldn't ask for a better opportunity. You're on your third string quarterback. There's 40 seconds left in this game, and you got the ball right around midfield. All 11 guys need to go out there and do their job and have an opportunity to either tie this thing up or maybe even possibly winning this thing, George. A 32-yard punt. Santino Marucci in his first start. Trying to be a legend here at Wake Forest on homecoming week. Tate Carney in the backfield. Diamond formation at the top. Marucci rolls to his right. He's going to keep it and goes out of bounds near the original line of scrimmage. A.J. Woods chases him out. 34 seconds left on the clock. A.J. Woods, man, he's been all over the football field today. A great job right there of just being able to transition to chase Marucci out of bounds right there. They're going to give him a one-yard loss on the play, perhaps. Yeah, because it's 
It's on the 49 now as opposed to the 48. Marucci. Second and 11. Got time in the pocket. Launches one down the field. Incomplete. Intended for Wesley Grimes. Marquez Williams in coverage there. Unbelievable job of Marquez Williams right there. Just understanding exactly where the ball is. They're going up and being able to tip that thing and get it and get it knocked out. Grimes had to turn around. It was a little behind him, but should he have come up with that one? Big time players make big time plays, right? The game's on the line right now. If you could touch it, you could catch it. That's what I always say. Third and 11. 28 seconds to go in the game. Pressure coming. Marucci flushed out of the pocket, being chased. Throws an ill advised pass, but it's complete at the 40 yard line to Keyshawn Williams. He's going to be just shy of the first down marker, though. A nine yard gain, timeout Wake Forest. 18 seconds to go, timeout. and it should be about Wake fourth Forest. and three. Third and final. 30 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 20 seconds. Check that, they're marking him at the 39. So it'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Unbelievable job by Mariucci. Just keeping his eyes down the field the whole entire time while Dayon Hayes is chasing him down. But an even better job of Keyshawn Williams staying alive in the scramble drill right there to catch it and bring up a fourth and manageable. Here's what we saw earlier. Claiborne has been doing the work for Wake Forest. And then on the other end, Bub Means, a career high today. Jamal Banks had to fight for that one, but Devonshire had the inside leverage there and came up with the pick. But there, slid short of the first down, according to the officials. We didn't have the perfect angle on that. And it forced Pitt to punt. And Marucci and company are trying to get in field goal range here, at the very least, with 20 seconds to go. Williams in motion, fourth down, Marucci. He's got Keyshawn Williams for the first down, and then some cutting across the field, taken down at the 15-yard line. A huge first down. That will stop the clock. They'll have to spike it here quickly, and they do. 12 seconds left on the clock, and Wake Forest is in field goal range. Keyshawn Williams again coming up big for his young quarterback right here. But Marucci has been on the money in this fourth quarter with how he stole the ball down the field. Keyshawn Williams showing that he can run after the catch, being explosive. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. Marucci, over the middle! It's caught! Touchdown! Cameron Height with the touchdown! Wake Forest takes the lead! Just a few seconds away from being a legend on homecoming week. Unbelievable job of surveying the field. But I love that he goes to the big tight end, Cameron Height, right here. 6'3", 243 pounds. And he goes up and gets it and brings it down. Unbelievable job. But an unbelievable finish for this Wake Forest offense. I love that they got the, the tight end involved late in the game because in order to have a chance of winning this game today, George, they were going to have to run the football. Tight ends are involved in running the football. So I love that they went to the tight end right there. They're reviewing the play to see if it's a catch and he got in the end zone. Seven seconds to go. When you get to your, your third or fourth string quarterback, you know that you're going to have to be able to run the football. Tight ends are an extension of offensive alignment. They're a part of the run game. 
So I love the fact that you were able to try to look for the tight end in a situation like this. And I believe that he caught it. It looks like he goes up there with strong hands from that angle. But as we know, there are multiple angles to this thing. So the knee goes down. Let's see where the ball is when the knee goes down. Knee down there. Where's the ball, though? That's the question. I think it might have broke the plane. Oof, that's it. Right? It's the angle that we're seeing right now. Right, right. We don't have the correct angle or the proper angle because we don't have it straight down the line. And they're still discussing here. Let's just say, for argument's sake, it's, it's not a touchdown. Then what do you do? If it's not a touchdown, I'm giving it back to Claiborne. I got to go up there and I'm running the football. I'm putting it on the offensive line. I'm not taking chances throwing the ball. Too many people have to touch the football when you throw it. After further review, ruling on the field stands. Santino Marucci, legend. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it for this young man. But I love it for Cameron Hyde even better because the tight ends have been blocking and taking care of business today in the run game. So it's nice to see one get rewarded right there. What looks like the walk-off game-winning touchdown. First start. And giving his team the lead with seven seconds to go. Put some respect on that young man's name. His dad won a national championship at the University of Miami in 1991. And today in his first start, he is seven seconds away from pulling out a come from behind victory. Unbelievable effort offensively by this whole entire Wake Forest offense. I mean, they found a way to play with each other. When things weren't going well, they kept their head down and kept on just inching forward more and more. And as you just saw, Mariucci being able to go down the field, big time throw after big time throw for that young man. This goes a long way for his confidence and the remainder of his college football career. And if you're Wake Forest, if Mitch Griffiths can't come back, because we know Michael Kern, the backup, is out, and Griffiths, the starter, has been out, it has to give you at least a little more confidence in him moving forward, potentially. And how we saw this game started, right? They were running the football, didn't give them a lot of opportunities. Only six passing attempts in that first half. So that playbook will get bigger and bigger as the weeks go on for Mariucci because of what he just did on that final drive right there. A squib kick. Takes a high bounce, Bartholomew kneels it right away. As he kneels it near the 22 yard line. One play, six seconds to go. What are you doing? Are you doing the hook and ladder play? Or are you trying to just launch it down the field? What do you think? Yeah, I think you've got to go with the hook and ladder. Because if I'm Wake Forest, my whole defensive backfield is going to be about 50 yards down the field. So I think you've got to go hook and ladder and, and hope that some magic, some last second magic happens. Or as Scott Van Pelt likes to call it, pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo, where you throw it to one guy and they're starting to launch it across the field. Vayer tosses it incomplete. Intended for Dejan Reynolds. Second and ten. Three seconds to go. Yeah, Reynolds didn't look like he understood what was going on right there. He wasn't even looking for the football coming out of his break. An instant classic here in Winston-Salem. Bayer. Roland. Launches it down the field. It is caught. But that'll That's do it, not game. enough time. Mumfield with the catch, and Wake Forest gets their first victory against Pitt. Santino Marucci, that kid is a baller. Celebration here in Winston-Salem, an instant classic.